Now, it's no secret that I love pterosaurs, and very recently, two new studies came out surrounding the enigmatic flying reptiles that I think are just really, really cool. So let's talk about them. So the more recent of the two studies that came out looks at the pterosaur brain. Essentially, a bunch of international scientists got together and studied over 33 different species of pterosaurs, archosaurs, crocodiles, birds, dinosaurs and their close relatives, and of course the precursors to all of them and the most basal of them all, different archosauromorphs. Now, the study yielded that the overall large brain sizes that we see in modern day birds is not in fact a result of their flight capabilities. Uh, pterosaurs are doing the exact same thing that birds are doing with a much smaller set of hardware behind their eyes. One of the main things that was discovered by these scientists was that the optic lobe was humongous compared to those of other animals related to pterosaurs. Aside from that though, the closest living relatives to pterosaurs and pterosaurs themselves had very similar brain structures and sizes overall. This has led scientists to believe that pterosaurs developed flight rather quickly on the evolutionary time scale and sort of diverged and exploded into the many, many forms that we see in the fossil record now from that one delineation point. The other paper that was recently published has to do with a brand new Brazilian pterosaur named Bacaribu Warista. This pterosaur is noteworthy for many reasons, one of them being that it's the first of its kind ever discovered in the area. It was a Brazilian stenognathid. Now, the stenognathids were a diverse group of pretty much all seemingly filter feeding pterosaurs. They all had very wacky teeth and Bacaribu was no different. Now, Bacaribu's teeth were not as insane as, say, Pterodostro's teeth, but they were still pretty wonky and were very charismatic overall. Now, Bacaribu is noteworthy for being not only the first stenognathid in the area, but also the first in this time zone that we know of as well, living around 110 million years ago. So it really fletches out the ecology of the area. The more noteworthy thing about Bacaribu, however, was how it was discovered. Bacaribu was found in something called a regurgitolite, which is essentially fossilized vomit. Our main culprit as to what ate Bacaribu is most likely Irritator, but we don't know for sure. Either way though, these two studies are awesome. I highly recommend that you check out both these papers. Subscribe and follow for more dinosaur and animal stuff.